Hey YouTube, so today I'm actually going to show you guys how to import .jpx uh, course files uh, onto your Garmin Fenix 3 HR, um, specifically how to import it on a Mac. Um, so let's get started. First, you have to make sure you have your uh, USB charger um, connected and plugged into your iMac. Um, and when it's plugged in, it will go into the mass storage mode, uh, which the device is charging. And on your Mac, you'll be able to see the Garmin, um, the Garmin icon, uh, which is the actually storage space uh, from your Phoenix 3 or HR. Um, and specifically, when you actually open the folder how we're gonna how we're gonna import the gpx files as you can see i have a few files um those are for the hudson valley 100 mile ride for this year um i'm planning on using my watch and following the tracks um on my watch so basically if you've read some tutorials before you know to import gpx files there's not a direct way on garmin connect you have to do it manually by opening the storage on your phone and actually drop the files uh, onto your storage. Um, there's a specific folder called new files. As you can see when I opened my when I opened my finder for the storage, I don't actually see that window. Uh, there's M M but the N is missing. And the reason why is because it is actually a hidden file, a hidden folder in Phoenix 3 HR. Uh, it might also be a hidden folder for uh, Phoenix, Phoenix 3 as well. Um, so on a Mac, in order to display hidden files, you have to type in some commands um, like so. The commands over here, this is just the overview and I'll actually post the, um, the actual commands down below so you can copy and paste and put it in your terminal. So to display the hidden files, basically you type this in defaults write com dot apple dot finder and space apple show all files true and this is basically the apple version of display hidden files so let's open the command uh, to open the uh, sorry let's open the terminal and to open the terminal the quickest way is go to your spotlight which is right over here and spotlight window is open you just start typing t and the terminal might just pop up as the first guess. So hit enter. So now the terminal is up. Uh, you're just uh, simply paste the command inside. So I right click and I hit paste. So, and I hit enter. So at this point, the file is still not showing. Why? Because uh, you actually have to uh, kill the finder app and relaunch it. Uh, that's why we uh, actually have to use another command kill all space finder so that command actually relaunches the finder um, and you'll be able to see that I'm gonna paste it over here into terminal and as soon as I hit enter you'll be able to see that special hidden file uh, hidden folder it's called new files and this is actually where you drop your um, GPX files inside so once you drop a file inside the next next thing you're gonna do is actually um, disconnect your Phoenix 3 HR and let it process the new file. And since this is a really large file, it's a hundred mile course. It actually takes quite a while for it to complete process. But over here, I'm just gonna do a quick demo and uh, show you. Oh, and in case you see, like if I try to double click it. The folder wouldn't open and if you want to see the contents inside you actually just simply right click and say open new tab and it will actually have the file displayed in here and the reason i have the 100 mile inside already is because um before this tutorial i already dragged the file inside so um so as soon as i disconnect my gps watch uh, it will start processing and how do you know it's processing is because, um, okay, let's do a quick tutorial. I'm gonna close all the window and properly eject it from the, um, from using the ejection button. 
and let's just wait for it to eject properly. And I might just fast forward. Okay, don't have to. Um, so it is ejected, but it's still charging, but I'm just gonna disconnect. Let's see. And as soon as you start, um, as soon as you disconnect, um, normally this charging uh, icon will disappear, but if it's processing a large GPX file um, for your course, it's gonna take a while. So at this point, I may as well fast forward to the point where it is done so I can show you guys um, how the course looks like in the Garmin navigation um, app. And I'm also going to show you guys um, how the course looks like in a popular navigation app called DW Map. Um, you can get it from the Connect IQ store and it works for both Phoenix 3 and Phoenix, Phoenix 3 HR. So um, we'll do a quick comparison uh, once this rebooting is finished. All right, as you can see, right now it's updating and restarting. Um, just while it's restarting, um, and in the future, if you don't want to see the hidden files, um, it's also very easy to take it off. So basically you use the similar command, which is default space write space com dot apple dot finder space apple show all files. And instead of true, you change the value to false. And hit enter. And at this point, the file is still gonna be shown, so make sure you use the kill all space finder uh, command to actually refresh the finder app. And once you enter that, all your hidden files will be gone um, on, your, um, on your desktop, so it's back to normal. Uh, next time you want to do it, just quickly type the same command and you'll be in the Garmin Phoenix 3 folder in no time. Okay, so let's go back to the watch Right now, it should have synchronized. Just a second. It should have synchronized um, the course map. So let's go into the navigation and see if it's actually loaded or not. And as I said, it's a hundred mile GPX file. I'm not sure if it's gonna work or not. Let's see courses. Oh yes, it is successfully loaded. Um, and. It actually already pulled the title from the GPX file. Um, Discover Hudson Valley, 100 mile ride. Let's go in and see what's going on in here. So there's options to do the course, which when you press start, it will start following the course um, till its completion. Um, we can go to the map where you can actually um, preview the entire 100 mile. Um, course um, maps on the uh, on the Phoenix of course you're not gonna get the uh, detailed maps but um, this works just fine uh, to simply follow it so uh, when you press the start and stop it switches the icons over here so you can use uh, zooming and zoom out going left and right up and down uh, and in between so let's go find our starting point Almost there. Okay. So that's our starting point. Quite exciting. Um, let's see. Well, the only downside with the Phoenix 3 or HR, it's not a touch screen. So the buttons works uh, okay, especially on navigation features. Um, that's when uh, I miss my uh, old uh, Garmin Apex. Unfortunately, the Apex is not being updated anymore, so it have a lot of bugs. Um, so that's that's what the course looks like on, on the map. And uh, let's see. There's also a trackback function. If you've a road midway and you feel so tired, you want to go back on your original route, you use your trackback. It also works for hiking and running and walking. Um, Elevation plot. Let's see. Let's see if it works. Okay. 
and it's a large data field so I'm expecting it to take a while to load so the total climb is 5,636 foot. Uh, let's see. Okay, go back. And I can, of course, change the name or delete the course. And let's go back and take a look at. Excuse me. Got all the cat hair on my uh, fingers. And it's not helping with the cat coming over here. Okay. Let's go back to the uh, DW Map app and see uh, what's going on in there. Okay. It's actually to start the DW app, uh, Map app, you just press start stop and go into your uh, workout mode. It's actually uh, presented over here in your workout mode. So let's let's go in and check out. And for the DW Map app, I actually preloaded this course uh, through their website, which is uh, actually quite uh, easy and convenient. The only downside is you have to have the Bluetooth enabled because it actually, the app is um, accessing or downloading the courses through your phone, uh, through your phone's internet connection, actually. So, um, so that's just one thing to point out. Uh, either way, with either DW Map or the Garmin, uh, the course app, you you have to you have to do the map uh, importing on your desktop. There is no way around it. Um, that's the unfortunate part. Um, let's see. So I guess press press all the functions and see what's going on. Okay, so right now it's displaying Z1 and Z2. I think that's a zoom level. Um, the three and I think there's four levels of zoom. Um, so and it also have some other data field fields, the speed, the time, distance, average speed, heart rate, uh, cadence, power and battery. Uh, of course, it also displays attitude, um, ascending and um, and the sports mode you are in, uh, for which I've set to cycling. Um, so that's that's a few data fields. The excuse me, DW Map app uh, features, and from the review, I heard the uh, heart rate tracking through this app is is kind of off. So um, it might not be accurate. So uh, I'm hesitant to actually try it on my longest ride, um, but. Um, later on, for some other small rides, I will be coming back and update the description in the video and let you guys know if it works fine or not. Um, but uh, this is through this is the navigation of the um, course through the DW map, and I think that sums it all. Um, if you guys have any questions on how to import the uh, GPX GPX files. Uh, to your Phoenix 3 HR on your Mac, feel free to um, write uh, write me a comment. Uh, otherwise, thank you so much for watching and hope you guys enjoyed it. Have a good day.